Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I come to you today and the Holy Spirit in thanksgiving for thy love, protection, and care, and for allowing me to be able to stand before your people to bring a message from you to them. Thank you for whatever the Holy Spirit prompts me to speak, and whatever is prepared. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hope you all had a good week and weren't as weak as some others were. Um, we are living in perilous times. We are presently in a new year. The year ahead of us what should we expect? Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy chapter 3. And as the scripture reading this morning said, This know also that in the latter in the last days, perilous times shall come. The last days of what? The last days of earth. As we see the signs of the times, we know that something spectacular and grand is about to happen. And we as Christians believe it is the second coming of Jesus Christ. But Paul went on to say, Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. Young people, I want to beg you this morning in the name of Jesus to be obedient to your parents. And all the ones who have parents alive, still be loving and obedient and kind to them. I tell you, I wish my mother was alive today. She died at age 98 some, what, 40 years ago? And I think of her every day. She was the most darling person in the world. One morning when I didn't have anything to eat to go to school, I said, Mom, I can't go to school anyway because I'm hungry. She said, she looked at me and she said, son, Going to school anyway, you will thank me for it. So I went to school. Because I was the brightest boy in the class, everybody loved me. Because I could look over my shoulder and copy off my paper. <laughs> but I was the poorest boy attending school. <laughs> and when I graduated from college and I looked over and didn't see my mother I was an obedient child to my mother my father so I'm advising you all to be obedient. The Bible said disobedience would happen in the latter days. But I'm advising you to be obedient. Don't be disobedient to your parents, even if you are an adult. But Paul went on to say, unthankful. Who? Unthankful. I hope you are thankful for what God is blessing you with. Without 
natural affection. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despise of those that are good. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of Christ, of God. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. Turn away from people like those. And I want you when you go home, sit down and contemplate what Paul said would be happening in the last days. And look at what's happening around us today. I'll get to some of that later. The last verse says, For this sort they are the sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts. You go into the big cities and you see how many whores you find around. Lots of them. And the Bible talk about them. So what we are seeing today is nothing strange. Paul said these things would happen. It was happening in his time, but not as much as, what, as what's happening today. So the year around us, what to expect? Leaders around the world think they are in charge of situations. Someone died and left them in charge. South Korea, I mean North Korea, think they are in charge of the world. All the communist countries think they are in charge of the world. Cuba, you can go there as a tourist. We can go there as missionaries. It's the strangest thing to me when I went to Cuba, and I went there twice, and found out that you cannot go there as a tourist, but you can go there as a missionary. And think about the different countries around the world. They are behaving as if somebody died and left me in charge. They take charge of things. I do not know what this year will bring to me or to us, but I know I have a hope that cling to, I cling to no matter what. The song says, the General Conference song several years ago, we have this hope that burns within our heart. Hope in the coming of the Lord. We believe the time is here, near when the nations far and near shall awake and shout and sing, Hallelujah! Christ is King. My friends, Hallelujah time soon be here. When the clouds break and Jesus descend and come down, and all the saints in Christ shall rise. And we shall shout, hallelujah, Christ is king. Don't you want to be there? Don't you want to be there? I want to be there. And I don't want anything to stop me from being there. What lurks around the corner from this year, for this year? We don't know. But as we see what's going on in the streets, in the schools, we can see that great things are, are about to happen. What lurks around the corner for this year? Is it ter terrorism? Is it hijackings? Is it people going around to churches, killing 
innocent worshippers? Is it the economic, natural disasters, students shooting uh, um, in the schools? The happening around the world is nothing new, but they are becoming more frequent and more violent. Now here in America, I, I came here 60 years ago. No, not 60 years ago. I'm telling a lie. Uh, it came here 50 years ago. And what I'm seeing happening today in this country, i never seen it happen before. I taught in the schools. And brother, you know, after I finished my theology degree and I came out and was not placed, I found other jobs. And as a probation officer, I found the people on probation were more obedient than the children in the classroom. When I, I retired from the probation department, I went into the classroom to help out, to find out I couldn't. When they talk about disobedient to parents, Teachers have no respect. Teachers who are supposed to be grooming you for the future and you don't listen to them? I hope the students here today listening to me, whether you be college or high school or whatever, listening to me, I hope you are obedient to your teachers. Be respectful. Be honorable. They are the ones grooming you for the future. The more respect you show to them, the better your grades will be. Well, my grades weren't good because I was so respectful to my teacher. But I was respectful to my teacher, and the Lord had blessed me. And now today, it's gone. Old age has taken it away. You 78 years old? You're an old man. And old age has taken it away, sister teacher. So what I knew then, I don't know now. And what I learned even last year, I don't know it now. <laughs> but that's the way life is. The poem said, I said to the man at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than a light and safer than a known way. So don't mind where we are and what we think we are. Unless you put your hand into the hand of God and let him lead you you are nothing and you are nowhere. We are nothing until we come to Jesus Christ and know him as our Lord and Savior. So when you see people, I don't, I'm not, I don't mean some the Adventist. Because we have some bad people in the church. But the good Christians in other denominations the good Christians around, we put our hand in God's hand and let him lead us. That will be safer than a light and better than a known way. Let's turn to St. Matthew chapter 7 and see what Jesus admonishes here.
Matthew 7, 24 and 25 says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house upon the rock. A what man? Wise man. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Who is the rock? Jesus Christ is the rock, and we call him the rock of the ages because he's from eternity past to eternity future. Can you imagine that eternity? Tell me who can imagine that? Solomon could not imagine it. And he was the wisest man who ever lived. And he said, if we place our trust upon him, who is the rock and the rock of all ages, we will be forever with him. He admonished us to build on him because he is the rock of our salvation. So when the tempest of life comes, we can have a safe home, a safe haven. We can say within, with confidence, the Lord is our rock, in him we hide. He is my shelter in the time of storm. Not only in the time of storm, but in the storms of life. Is our shelter. There was a tempest in the ocean. And all the birds, you know, they always fly around in the ocean, some trying to find fish. And because of the winds blowing, you had to fly away, but one little bird found itself in the crevice of the rock over the ocean or the sea. And while the winds were blowing high and hard, and the other birds could not go close, that little bird stayed in the rock, and it chirped and chirped and chirped away happily. Nothing to bother me because I'm in this rock. And Jesus is telling you this morning, stay with me. I am your rock and I am your shelter in the time of your storms. My young people, I just love you all. We are the finest group of young people. There are few. Not very many. But there are few. But they are the finest people I ever seen anywhere. I'm going to advise you, especially you young ladies. I don't want to get in anybody's business. But I would hate for any of you to be deceived by anybody, especially those who don't even come near to the church. So, stay with Jesus. And when the young men offer you their gold and their silver and their fine cars and whatever, remember, Jesus is first. He is your rock. And he's first. If you're courting someone to find that the young man or the young woman is not with Jesus Christ, no. No. Put them aside. But before you start the courting, 
Make sure you are quote, a Christian man or a Christian woman. Somebody who is with Jesus Christ. But unless you do that, you're going to come out crying. And I would hate to see one of you crying. You are just too beautiful for me to see you be deceived. So put your trust in God and trust in him. Um, Paul was traveling as a prisoner and the ship was tossing back and forth and the people were afraid. But Paul grasped by, 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 by faith the arm of infinite power and his heart was stayed upon God. He had no fears for himself. He knew with certainty that God would preserve him to witness at Rome for the truth of Christ. His heart yearned with pity for the souls around him, sinful, degraded, unprepared, and unprepared to die. They were making all types of noise and commotion. Fear were killing them. As he earnestly pleaded to God to spare their lives, it was revealed to him that his prayer was granted. And that is on, uh, uh, that's taken in the book of Acts. Um, well, where do I have it here? Um, Acts 27. And he told them, listen, don't bother yourself. I have a God who will protect me. And so it was revealed to him that his prayer was granted. And Paul stood on the deck of the ship said to them, Sirs, if you had listened to me, you would not have suffered this great loss. What was the great loss? The ship was tossed to and fro, and they had to throw out all their goods and things like that. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and who I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul. You must be taken before Caesar. And God hath given thee and all them that are with you Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. We shall reach Rome safely. I believe God that it shall be even as it was told to me. At these words, hope revived. I wish today that we would exercise our faith in God such that when we have problems, we throw them at his feet and have hope. We have this hope that burns within our heart. And it should be burning in our heart every day. Christians should not only be Christians for a day. But it should be Christians every day. 
What do you say, young people? You believe that? He said, be of good cheer. Because it will not be long before the master comes. They reach Rome safely. The ship was out on the ocean and they were having problems. So they had to go to the shore. Not Paul's ship now. It's a new ship I'm talking about. And as they went on shore, the captain of the ship told them, I am going away and I'll be back to get you. He left one man in charge. I think his name is Mr. Pasipapo. Pasipapo, something like that. And he left him in charge and every day he would go and say, gentlemen, be ready, the master might come today. And for three weeks, every day he comes out. Gentlemen, be ready. The master might come today. After three weeks, one day they looked over at the shore. And there was the ship coming. The master has come. We are looking out for that ship today. The master to come. Jesus tells us to look for him to come back. When the battle you are fighting is all uphill, when you are laughing although you would rather cry, stop and take a deep breath. But don't quit. We are having hard times in this life today, aren't we? And many of us are having financial difficulties, aren't we? Many of us are having all, all types of difficulties. But don't quit. Whatever the burden you are bearing, just one more step might get you there. When the weather is stormy and the waters are rough, stop, stop, stand up and shout. I will not quit. That's the Christian's life. Quitters never win. And winners never quit. So I want to tell you today, young people, I'm preaching to everybody. But young people, whenever you're determined to do something, and it is something good, Never stop until the impossible to take place. Never stop. The moment you stop, you fail. The moment you stop, you fail. You know, as I travel around the world, preaching the gospel and helping people. I don't only preach the gospel. You, you all know that. I have my orphanages to take care of and young men going to school and, 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 and all pastors getting them car, and, and not car, but motorcycle and bicycles and so forth. Um, and as I, I do all those things, I feel good doing them. And I'm not going to stop until the Lord says to me, you can't go anymore. You know how sad I was last month when I was to be in Ethiopia? And I couldn't make it? I felt very sad. But I told my wife I want to go to Bosnia this year. I said, you sure you want to go? You think you're healthy enough? I trust him. I know he'll give me the health to go. And take my word for it. He will. My wife didn't think I could be standing up here preaching this morning. Because I said, you're too sick to be up there. And then my brother brought me, um, came to me and said, should I put a chair for you to sit and, and preach this morning? 
I said, no, 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 no. Put that away. I don't need it. I'm strong enough. God has given me the strength to do it, and I'm doing it, and I want to keep on doing his work for him. He says, go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. Tell them about his return. He's coming soon. And if you don't believe it, I believe it. Because the signs of the times are telling me. All these shootings in the schools. Oh, my Lord. Teachers are afraid to go to school. But they don't know when an idiot will come in with a gun and shoot them down. So many students are losing their lives. Are you listening to the news? And even here in Texas, what was it? Round, um, Round Rock? Um, yesterday, there was a shooting in the school. No, it wasn't Round Rock. It's another little country town. See, my friends, we are living in perilous times. Times of peril. But we were warned. We have been warned. So all Jesus is asking us to do is to trust him. When the weather is stormy and rough, and the waters are rough, stand up and shout. I will not quit. God is our shelter and refuge, our protector, our shelter in the time of storms. So although the stormy winds may blow and the tempest rage, the billows foam, and all the forces of hell rage against you, Keep your faith in Jesus Christ because he is your anchor that holds you safe and secure. When you're on a boat and you're on the shore, you don't have a little piece of cord to hold you. You have a strong cord to hold your boat so you can go in. When you're ready to go in the water, you lose that cord. Strong cord. Hold it up. Put it in the boat. You sail out. Jesus is our anchor. He's our shelter. And he's our strong cord. So in spite of the political upheavals all around the world, Jesus is in charge. So let nothing between your soul and your Savior. Loving Father, send the Holy Spirit here today and let nothing come between us and you. And help us, Lord, that we will give our hearts totally to you daily and submit to you in all things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.